Okay, so The Last Jedi. Just got out of my second time seeing it. This time, obviously, I went dressed for the occasion. Uh, also, I brought a box of Kleenex with me because I learned my lesson the first time I watched it. I cried far too much the first time, and I totally did again this time, but not nearly as much. Uh, as far as a Star Wars film goes, I feel that this is getting us back to where we should be in the saga. I am curious to see what's going to happen next, what the state of everything is. We keep losing so many of the resources, like with the Rebels, all of a sudden all of their, their ships are gone and they're left with the Falcon. Not, the Fal not that the Falcon's bad or anything, but that's a lot to change and a lot to try to deal with to go from having everything and then having nothing. And also the question of personnel now. They said that everyone got their message and no one came for them, right? So what's going to happen next? Obviously this is going to be talking about spoilers that happen in the film, so if you have not watched it yet, you might want to go read or listen to or view something else until you've seen Star Wars The Last Jedi. I think the thing that I was not expecting, and that seems to be the number one thing that all of the reviewers and all of the hardcore Star Wars friends of mine are saying, is that they were not prepared, and they weren't expecting. And it seems like a lot of that goes to emotion, emotional impact, how much Ryan Johnson, fabulous writer and director of this film, how much he let the audience go through the process of both loving and losing some of these characters. I mean, obviously, Carrie Fisher's General Leia does not pass in this film, and everybody who sees it is highly aware that she's gone in general. And it, it hurts. <laughs> Every scene with her in it is so hard to watch, and I caught myself the first time thinking, please let this be the last one. And that sounds really terrible because I love her, obviously. But every single scene with her in it in Last Jedi could have been her last. And I would have been very, very happy with it. They were all beautiful and strong and amazing. And I hate that this is the last we're going to get of her and her in this character. We were told by Kathleen Kennedy and by Ryan Johnson both that this was setting up what was going to be a much larger arc for Leia in 10 and obviously we're not going to get that now and it breaks my heart as a Carrie Fisher fan and as a Princess Leia fan going back to the obvious that for a very long time there were no women in science fiction like this, and there probably won't be another one quite like her. She was the only woman there with these boys, she saved their skins multiple times, always the self-rescuing princess, and it would have been really cool to see what they were going to do with her in 10, especially with some of the things that are put into motion with Last Jedi. So, obviously now there's a big reveal that Maybe we've all known she was very Force-sensitive before, but she gets blown out of a ship. And somehow, magically, midi-chlorians, ha 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 ha, whatever, she keeps herself alive in the middle of space and propels herself back into the ship. Obviously that's not your average type of Force use, but is there an average Force use? My uh, household was not impressed with this decision to have her both survive this space sojourn and to be able to save herself that way, but if there's one thing we know about good old Leia, gets herself out of pretty much anything. So I, for me, I loved that there was a glimpse of whatever power she might have. And we know from other previous films and scenes of Yoda talking to Luke about, no, no, there's, there's another. It's okay. There's another. And it's never really touched on. And, 
the big thing that I wish we would have gotten in this is more of... I can't say what her powers are, but what capability she and Luke would have had together. I said this walking out of the theater my first time seeing Return of the Jedi, or uh, not Return of the Jedi, God, you guys can punch me for that one, uh, The Last Jedi, that during the final showdown with Luke and Kylo, I really wanted Leia to go out there with Luke. Like, they could have held hands and done some really awesome Force Twins stuff. And it would have been the most amazing thing. And I'm very sad we didn't get that. Am I happy with what we did get as far as action and character arcs and emotional impact? And I very much so. I think that this is probably one of the stronger emotional films in the entire saga. They tried really hard with the prequels, let's be honest. They tried so hard. Poor George. We love you. You can't write dialogue. You just, you can't. And giving what you gave to the actors you gave it to, not really the best thing. But with the more recent films, they're, they were trying too hard with Force Awakens, almost, that it was very much, you guys need to feel this way about this character in this moment, instead of ensuring that we did feel that way. And I think that Ryan Johnson definitely did that with this film. I'm still not sure how I feel about Rey, but I like Daisy Ridley's weight in the role now. That she is more comfortable, I think, in who the character is. Or maybe she knows more now who the character is. And I enjoyed her performance a lot more this time than I did in Force Awakens. And the humor. The humor was fabulous. A lot of people are not too happy with it. There's a lot of complaints that, well, only... Han Solo should be able to crack jokes like that in this universe. And it, no, that's not fair. It's been how long since he was around? You're telling me his humor didn't rub off on the people he was around? I find that hard to believe. Uh, I'm trying to think of all the other things I wanted to say about this film. Uh, be proud. I haven't cried yet, guys. Like, right here. I haven't cried yet. Good things. Uh, the critters were all... Interesting. I know a lot of people hate porgs. I don't mind them. Builds into the whole thing about that island being its own ecosystem. Uh, I love the caretakers. Angry fishwives. They were pretty funny. I enjoyed them. And uh, of course, our favorite Star Wars critter. Sorry, Chewbacca. Yoda. Master Yoda. How cool was that? Like, how cool was that? seen uh, two times this film now, the various reactions of the audiences to his appearance. The first time it was a, oh, I know who that is. And tonight it was more a, yeah, we know who that guy. And it was, it was really cool. Uh, I have to assume that Ryan Johnson is a Battlestar Galactica fan. And I say this because uh, Laura Dern's character, Admiral Haldo, she's very Admiral Kane-esque. Michelle Forbes played her in Ron Moore's Battlestar in 09. And I see just a little, couple of few little borrowy things there. And then, of course, there is her jump through the fleet. Not to mention, we have a bit of 33 going on there, where every time the fleet makes a jump, those pursuing them show up 30 seconds later. So not, not 33 minutes, but you get the idea. But that the jump, the jump through the fleet was just inspired, and hearing audiences react to that was also amazing. A lot of dead silence and then the realization of what just happened and everyone just kind of going oh my god she can't do that she just did that but but she did that i think i'm not going to be able to see the film again for a while i said this on monday and i decided to go see it again today which is thursday so i could record this and have it fresh in my mind and it it still really hurt and it's not that I'm so fragile I can't handle watching it. It's more, 
again, every bit of dialogue and everything that they had the characters say just, it affects you. It affects you. There are times when I think of the dialogue that they had Carrie saying in some of the scenes, and that's partially what it is that got me emotionally. There's the one scene where she has been brought back onto the ship after her being blown out into space, and they're addressing the remainder of the Rebels, and the line is that she's unconscious and she's fighting. And if you all remember, when Carrie suffered her heart attack on the plane, that was what we were told, was that she was unconscious, but she was fighting. And it... I can't decide if I like that it's in there or not, because it brings it all back, the way it felt, knowing that here's a figure who's so important to so many people, for various reasons going through this, and then here she is again in film with the same type of thing. There's many moments like that, and I'm sure so many of you guys are going to have similar feelings about it. I will totally admit that when we lost Han Solo in Force Awakens, I did not react to it the same way that many of my friends did. It was not a gut punch. I kind of saw it telegraphed. If you know your Star Wars, you know that there's a, always a reveal about parentage. There is usually a fight on a precipice with no railing, because there's no railing in Star Wars, and that somebody gets killed or dies. And so I was expecting the Han Solo one, but I was not expecting the loss of Skywalker this time. And I think that they, they handled it beautifully. Here we are back with Luke watching Two Suns set. And it was just one of the... <sighs> See? It was, just, it was beautiful. And characters in science fiction can mean any number of things. From a powerful warrior to comedic... Uh, scamp to somebody who inspires you to be more than you are. And Luke was always a farm boy who got away and tried to discover his destiny. And it was just a beautiful choice to bring him full circle like that. And the last scene between he and Carrie in the cave when he kisses her head just... A lot of history between those two, and boy, they're good actors, too. Yeah. Anyhow, thank you for listening. I know I rambled a little bit. Uh, I really enjoyed the film. I can't wait to see what Ryan Johnson does with his trilogy that he's getting to do after J.J.'s Star Wars 10 happens. I think that the galaxy far, far away is in really good hands with him. So, uh, may the Force be with you. <laughs>